I am Nancy Doherty. I work at the Registry of Deeds in Salem. I've been here for about 13 years. And a handful of years ago, Register O'Brien created some programs that we have converted into presentations and we, out, we go out to the public and we help educate the public. So about three years ago, we started a property fraud watch alert program. And this was based upon Register O'Brien, who is, reads a lot of periodicals and he stays up on the trends of what's happening in the world and in the United States. So he was following some trends that, you know, they start out west and they kind of move their way towards uh, the northeast. So he wanted to stay above the curve and he saw that there was fraud occurring in other parts of the country. So this is how this program began. So um, I'm going to put on a presentation. And like um, as Una said, you know, feel free to ask questions. And if, you, if, you, if the question arises, ask at the time. We will have time at the very end for a question and answer period. Thank you. So hold on one minute. OK. OK, so this is um, our property fraud watch presentation. And let me just put the next slide. So, so the FBI reports that property and mortgage fraud is one of the fastest growing white collar crimes in America. And this program, we believe, will go a long way towards detecting and thwarting real estate fraud. This is particularly helpful to the elderly who are often the most vulnerable with scams and frauds. And as we all know, there are so many different types of scams out there. Now you have the IRS, the stimulus check scam and the grandparent scam and you name it. So we are doing our part in um, trying to protect the homeowners um, of Southern Essex District. So Essex County has 34 communities and Southern Essex covers 30 of those communities. We, we start in Haverhill and move our way down to Nahant and over to Linfield and Lynn and Saugus. So what we do is every night we populate our documents and the city of Beverly will receive a copy of every deed that was recorded that particular day. And the assessor's office can change the property, property's ownership records and the tax collector can update the uh, address for the taxes. So Register O'Brien thought if we are sending the 30 communities deeds via email, then why can't we send more types of documents to more people. And this is how this program began. It is name and address driven. So um, there are different ways to create fraud. And what we believe is, so you need to create a false document, such as a deed. You need to forge it, counterfeit, alter it, falsify it, the document. Then you need to use that document and or attempt to use, possess it, obtain, accept a document or receive or to provide any forged, counterfeit, altered or falsely made document. So now you create a deed and now you use it or you, um, you record that document with the Registry of Deeds. Now the Registry of Deeds is a recording office we are a non-legal office. Our documents have to abide by the Massachusetts indexing standards. If a document meets that indexing standards, we are required by law to record it. That doesn't mean that that document cannot be challenged in a court of law. So we do accept documents as long as they do meet the indexing standards. So, you know, stealing a document, stealing a property via a document will be challenged in a court. So there are different ways of doing it. <clears throat> For example, I own a home in Beverly. My name's on the deed. 
if I want to create a new deed and I want to convey it to someone, I am the only one that needs to sign in front of a notary. So I could convey my property or add any one of you onto my deed and you would not even know that because you did not have to sign that deed. You wouldn't even know that you have ownership interest in my home. Nancy, I'm sorry to, to interrupt. Are you sharing, are you, do you have a PowerPoint up right now? I do, do you see it? We don't. You don't see it, okay. Oh, that I don't know why. Okay, I will um, reach out to our IT, but Can I'll just continue. Um, Try the, at the bottom of your screen, do you see share screen? Um, I in your... don't. Um, he did say that. Um, let me go back. Um, okay. I don't see the shared screen. Let me uh, minimize this and see. Um, like in your Zoom window. Oh, I do now. Okay. Sorry, this is my first. No, no, no problem. Okay, so now, I, so now, am I sharing it? We see now. We see your desktop, and I. So now, yes. Now we see. Yes, perfect. Oh, okay. All right. Sorry about that. No problem. He did mention that. Um, <laughs> okay, so um, I'll just go back to the first screen. So when I talked about the FBI and how um, mortgage fraud is one of the fastest growing white collar crimes in America. I mean, it happens. It happens here. You know, um, I can tell you that on I, when I do a presentation live, there was last summer, so summer 2019, there was a property in Cambridge that was stolen. It was, um, for a steal at $980,000. And the owner was, um, came home and found two men in suits and a locksmith changing the locks on his house. The problem was that that property was never for sale. And it was um, the defendant forged signatures, he altered documents, and he transferred the property resulting in a significant loss to the property owner and the lending institution. And um, he, you know, the, the notary stamp used to certify the deed was fake. Um, the forged documents were filed as legitimate as a legitimate transaction with the um, Middlesex County Registry of Deeds. And this gentleman had owned the property for over 50 years. He was 80 years old. And what they did was they took the bogus deed and they transferred it to a company. And that company then turned around and they flipped the property. So the people purchasing it had no idea that it was a, you know, a stolen home. So that happened in Cambridge. So it, you know, it does happen. Um, we have a case that happened um, in Hamilton where um, the man was very wealthy and his son had passed away and he wanted to take back the property that he had given to his son from his uh, daughter-in-law and child. So he was going to donate the property to Greenbelt and Greenbelt was, you know, um, alert enough to do a title search. And that's how this all came to be. So it does happen. You see more fraud within family than you do um, outside of family, but it does happen. So that's just the whole reason this whole program was um, started. So, um, you know, I explained that you need to um, take a document, create a document, create, let's say, a deed, and then you need to um, use that deed. You need to record it with our office, and then, um, or you can accept or receive any document um, you know, issued to or respect to a person other than the possessor. So this also includes people that have passed away. Um, it's always best to protect someone that passes away when someone owns property with a spouse. 
and they pass away. That deed does not automatically change and have their name removed. There are documents that can be recorded that affect that deed, such as a death certificate or affidavit, no estate tax. But the name is still on the deed unless they go to, you know, we hope an attorney and the attorney does maybe some estate planning and, um, you know, let's say they put him to trust, they add someone's name to a deed or, but for the most part, the deed remains the same. So um, you need to also protect people that have passed. So how can you prevent your home from being stolen? Um, our website, salemdeeds.com, um, is live time. All the documents that are being recorded, we don't hold the documents, so you can go on and you can see what's been recorded um, under your name. We always suggest that you go on and you search and see, make sure that your mortgages have the proper discharges, that your deed's there, that if you have a homestead, um, that's also on record. Um, a lot of people don't. They don't check their records periodically. Um, that's why the Property Fraud Watch alert is so important. So this program, Register O'Brien created for the documents at Southern Essex Registry of Deeds. It doesn't pertain to any other um, aspect of your life. Um, it's just the registry's documents. Um, if you see, you know, paperwork that you don't recognize um, or a signature that's not yours, look into it. If you receive mail that periodically comes to your home with a different name on it, and that person's never lived at that property, and you've owned the house for 32 years, Research it. Just don't throw that piece of paper uh, or piece of mail in the trash because it does happen. Um, you know, if you receive a payment booklet or information from a mortgage company that's not your name, you know, follow up with it. There is in um, Springfield, Virginia, and this is um, a article I read and it happened last November that a woman um, kept receiving, you know, um, offers to refinance her home. So after several months went by, she decided she was gonna open up one of the letters and it said, uh, you bought a new home, congratulations. Well, that was family fraud. That was her ex-boyfriend who concocted a story that he was serving overseas and he wanted um, the home to be put into his wife's name. So he conveyed the home to somebody else. And, um, you know, that happened. So it does happen here and there. Um, you know, if someone, um, there is a story that um, one of my coworkers tells, and this is a personal story, um, her husband's late wife kept receiving um, payment booklets for a mortgage. She'd been, <clears throat> she'd been passed 25 years. So it does happen. Um, you know, at this point in time, house stealing is not that common um, in the Northeast, but we're keeping an eye out for the, any of the major cases and um, we're following uh, the developing trends. Um, there was a lot of mortgage fraud back in like 2005, six and seven out in um, Chicago with rival gangs taking out mortgages against people's homes. So um, if there's always going to be a way to, um, you know, be fraudulent, whatever the next scam is. Um, you know, you have the grandparent scam. You know, um, my father received has received many calls, um, supposedly my one of my boys. You know, and it's not it's not them. I mean, they are not in trouble, and they have, they aren't looking for cash. So if, if you receive these phone calls, don't you know follow suit call the local police and let's see what the police can do for you. Um, they, they are there to help. So Register uh, O'Brien, our Property Fraud Watch is a um, program that is name and address driven. So there are different types of documents. We record a lot of documents here at the Registry of Deeds. There are different types of documents that um, will protect you from. So, um, once you sign up for the alert, 
it is just using your name and your email address. If you do not have an email address, if you do not frequently check your um, emails, no worries. The Registry of Deeds customer service has an email that we use. We monitor it while we're, while we're in the office. So you can choose to sign up through our email address and we'll monitor it for you, or you can use your own email as well. So either way, um, you can be covered. So the different types of documents that are monitored by this um, watch are deeds, mortgages, orders of notice. An order of notice is the first step in the pre-foreclosure um, process. The, it's just a notice. It's sent out by land court on behalf of the uh, lender. Um, so that notice does not require your signature. You wouldn't even know that it was recorded with our office unless you periodically checked. Foreclosure deeds also do not require your signature. Um, the city of Beverly, if they were going to take your property for back taxes, uh, tax takings, does not require your signature as, all, as well. So you see a lot of people that have put solar panels on their homes or people also lease hot water heaters and other type of um, appliances. So the UCC financing statements is a document that um, a solar company will put on record because they have a financial interest in your property if you're leasing the panels. Again, that does not require a signature. And you, will, you probably wouldn't even realize that that financing statement is on record unless you want to refinance your home and maybe the lender would want that terminated while you're refinancing and then you can put it back on. Um, mechanics liens do not require your signature. And a mechanics lien would be used in the situation if you had work done on your property and then there was a dispute between you and the contractor over the last payment, that contractor could put a mechanics lien on your property as well. Prior to the mechanics lien, they, many contractors put statements of accounts and notice of contracts. It's again, it's a statement and it's a notice. They're both not liens. They're valid for only a certain amount of time, but they don't require your signature. So there's many documents that can be recorded against your property that you would not even know. Uh, a mortgage does require a signature to be notarized, your signature. But if someone is fraudulently creating a document, they're going to find a notary that would be willing to um, state that they witnessed the proper signature when it really wasn't. So uh, that's why we, you know, the mortgages, um, deeds, they're both very, very important documents to keep an eye on. So what do you do if you think you are a victim of deed fraud? Uh, you act quickly. And this is why this program is so important because as I mentioned earlier, every night after six o'clock, the documents are populated. So if you were to get an alert, you would get it the day that the document's been recorded. If we are monitoring your uh, documents, it will be when we come to work the next following business day. So if you were to receive an alert, call or email the Registry of Deeds. Register O'Brien will make sure that we provide for you certified copies of the fraudulent documents from our registry. Uh, Register, uh, Register O'Brien will also assist you in reporting the crime to the proper authorities. We are not a legal office, but he will get you in touch with the DA, um, the Attorney General, and try to assist you in any way we can. So there are two ways of signing up for the Property Fraud Watch. We have a link on the homepage of salemdeeds.com 
and you can create the fields, fill in the fields that way. You can call our customer service team and the phone number is on the screen, but I'll let you know what it is. It's 978-542-1704. Also on the Registry of Deeds homepage, on the bottom left corner, there is a link to email the Registry of Deeds. So you can email a customer service staff and we have one person who monitors emails all day long. So we will answer you in a timely fashion. If you need help with you know, completing the property fraud watch, uh, we're here to help you with that as well. You can um, sign up more than one property under the same email address. So if you have um, a parent that you also want to watch their um, property, we can, um, you can put on the same email address. So the screen isn't that large, but on the bottom left corner, the property fraud watch link, what you will do is this is the screen that comes up first. And you can see there's a little red button in the center that says sign up now. So you click on that. And what you will see is it'll ask you for your email address. Once you press enter, it will ask you again for your email address. And if you can see below that email box, it says click add alert and enter your um, address into before clicking submit. Right underneath that is, it's, and it's very faint right now, it says add alert. That turns red when you enter your email address for the second time. And that way, that's what you click in order to start adding the different names. So you put in your email address the first time. It asks you to re-enter your email address. You click the add alert. And if you scroll down the screen just a tad bit, it's a gray background. This is where you type in your last name and your first name. So we suggest that you don't include a middle initial because the way that this works is it has to meet the way our recorders key in the information for every document that's being recorded. So you put in your last name, your first name, the street number, street name, and you can see you don't have to put drive if you don't want to street, but if you decide to do that, it explains to you right above it, just put ST for street, don't type it out, please. And then the city or town, and then you hit add. And if you wanna add another person's name, you go the same process again. So Smith, John, 123 Fake Street in Amesbury. So you will then see, once you put that name in, it shows right up here on the screen what you did. Then you can add another name. If you have your property and a trust, create a, uh, a field for the trust where in the last name you would put Smith Family Trust. And then first name would be, field would be empty, and then you put the street address. And you can have up to 10 alerts on one email. If you want more than that, let us know and I'll, our IT will work with you to accomplish that. So um, if you know anyone that's being victimized by property fraud, Register O'Brien will work with you and the appropriate law enforcement officials to ensure that those who have committed the property fraud will be held criminally responsible. Um, Register O'Brien has you know, assisted many, many people throughout the years um, in various ways. He's a hands-on um, Register, we're lucky to have him um, in Southern Essex. So if you have questions, you know, feel free to give us a call. Um, so that is basically what the Property Fraud Watch is. Um, so let me get out of this and I will um, leave it up for questions now. So.
anyone have any questions about the Property Fraud Watch? Um, hello, uh, Nancy, I have a question I wanted to ask you. What actually happens um, once uh, fraud's been detected? You said that um, Register O'Brien assists and they go through um, maybe the local law enforcement in their town, but um, does it take a long time for the individual to get the, the deed back in their name? And, and is it a, a nightmare to the homeowner? Or what, what, what do you know about that process? Okay, so um, that's a great question. Uh, once it leaves our hands, it's a legal matter where um, we really don't get the feedback. I mean, I can tell you that there have been other types of fraud that Register O'Brien has helped people with um, that were not stealing homes type of fraud. There was an oil company years ago that was offering um, a free 20 gallons of oil try to get them to introduce themselves to becoming a customer. But what they were doing is they were billing them as if they had gone in and provi provided another service as well. Mm -hmm. Then and they were um, targeting minorities. And then they would uh, file mechanics liens against the homeowners. So we were getting so many mechanics liens for, and this company had two or three different variations of their names. So one homeowner, you know, said, wait a minute, I did take the 20 free gallons, but you never, if never stepped inside my home, you did not provide that service. And she went to register O'Brien and we started an investigation and just run the name through our records. And he could see the pattern of how many mechanics liens, I mean, we're talking hundreds of liens and he got the um, DA's office involved and they were prosecuted. So mm -hmm. yes, all those liens went away for the homeowners, but for, for um, every house stealing, it's a different, it's a, a different scenario. Like this one in um, the, the example I used in Cambridge, um, I mean, that involved a convicted felon, a high-ranking police officer, a local attorney, and a wealthy real estate investor. They were all linked to the fraud case involving stolen property and forged documents. And this was uh, broadcasted by Boston 25. They investigated it. They found the um, convicted felon in South Carolina. He took off. Um, so it did have to you know, have its um, you know, day in court. Um, family fraud's a little bit different. You may have, you know, um, a family member that lived local, maybe lived in the house, cared for the parents. And when the parents passed, the relative, the sibling out in California who never came to visit, and now they are equal, you know, inheriting the property, and one may say, I don't think that that's fair. I did everything, you know? So you do see sometimes people altering deeds. Um, I mean, you hear the stories, like I said, um, in, new, in our registry, it doesn't happen that often. Mm -hmm. uh, Register O'Brien created this program because he is well-read. He does see the periodicals and he, and the publications and he, sees if something's gonna start in one part of the country, it's gonna move this way, you know? Um, so there were 2005, six, seven, eight, you know, the rival gangs in Chicago that were stealing um, people's homes through creating mortgages. Um, so every case I would assume would be an individual basis. I mean, how long far it takes the courts. I mean, it's, unfortunately, it's, um, it's a, a mess for a while. Mm -hmm. I'm sure a, it is. Yeah, I mean, you do become invested in it, um, you know, and you don't always get to hear the end of the story mm -hmm. when you help people. It sounds it. like it goes through the district attorney's office, though, right? It would, right. And then, um, you know, the rest, and then the AG's office, maybe. Mm -hmm. But yeah, John O'Brien has a very strong relationship with the different uh, officials. So if something does happen, you know, he 
makes that first phone call for you. Okay, thanks. Yes. Mm -hmm. um, we have a question in the chat. Um, okay. Oh, well, we have two. We have a follow up that says, did the gentleman in Cambridge lose his house? I believe, um, because I did print the article, article out before I um, came, he, I believe that everything was, um, you know, they, I believe he got his home back. Um, I believe he got his home back. I think the people, what, what happens is the lender is out the money many times as well. Um, and people are facing criminal charges. Um, this was the FBI. Uh, they were still investigating and talking to people when this was, uh, you know, being broadcasted. But I believe he did, absolutely. Um, okay, so and then the first one, um, can I simply register my name to ensure that I am not listed on someone's property to be responsible for their property taxes and liens? Hmm. Yes, you, I mean, our customer service department assists people all day long and many people will call up and say, I'd like a copy of the deed to my house or can you tell me who is the owner of this property or can you look at my, um, run my name. Now we are not title examiners, so we can't do a full title search, but if you ask us, can you just tell me if my name is still on the deed, we can look that up for you, absolutely. We have a lot of people that call to make sure that they have a declaration of homestead um, recorded with our office. So people um, all the time are, are calling and wanting to know, make sure their name's on the deed. People do, throughout home ownership, they'll have the name on the deed and then individually, and then they'll put it into a trust and they'll take it back out. So they wanna know where, what the, the most current deed is and what it states. I was wondering, how does that work? Um, you know, if we put our house on the fraud watch, so does that mean that a person at the registry would monitor the changes to our deed? Uh, regularly and let us know if there's any change? What would happen is in this, I sold my house two years ago and I have a property fraud watch. So I sold my house to John and Mary Smith. And that night, so the deed was recorded with the registry of deeds. That night I received an email from the registry of deeds stating, are you aware that a document was recorded today that matches your name and address. And there is a link and I clicked on the link and the document came up. And I said, oh, this is the, this is the deed. It was, it was recorded today. So that's what happens. You get a, an alert with a link to the document. So you can, let's say you got an alert and you opened up the document and said, oh, okay. I put my property into a trust the attorney recorded the deed today, and now I'm, it's being confirmed because I just got a copy from the Registry of Deeds because I am set up on the Property Fraud Watch. What happens is if you receive an alert from the Registry of Deeds and you open the document and there is a $50,000 mortgage and you say, I didn't take out a mortgage, and you scroll down to the last page and say, that is not my signature. So at that point, you now know that something just occurred with your property that you need to check out. So the next morning, you call the Registry of Deeds and say, a document was recorded with today, yesterday. That's not my signature. I did not take out a mortgage. And that's when we provide you copies, legal copies. We get you in contact with um, the proper law enforcement. I mean, you can even, you know, reach out to the police that night if you'd like, uh, but they're gonna not be able to do anything until we open the next morning. Or if you have, like I said, a contractor, you know, doing work on your property and there is a dispute and you find out that they put a mechanics lien on your property, you wouldn't know that. They're not gonna go, they may tell you they're going to do it, but you know, you kind of hope that it doesn't get that far. So that's what's. Oh, sorry. No, go right ahead. 
Um, so my husband likes to look at housing prices and saw a really cheap house near us. And then when he looked on the map to see where it was, it had said foreclosed. And then we saw it couldn't find it on the map, you know, where all the houses are listed. Mm -hmm. Suppose that could be a similar kind of fraud thing happening where, you know, the person isn't really selling their house, but it's, you know, listed as a foreclosure in somewhere else. It was really cheap. It got our attention. <laughs> foreclosure documents are recorded with our office. Uh, many times we are the first to know, and many times we seem to be the last to know um, because we're just merely recording agencies, so we don't know what's coming in in the mail that day. When it arrives, that's when we put it on record. Um, it all depends on what website you were viewing. I mean, it looked like Zillow was one. Zillow. Mm -hmm. I don't know what the other one was. Right. The map of all the houses for sale. Um, mm -hmm. Yeah, Zillow has the, that type of map. They may not have had all the information, mm. but um, once a property does go to foreclosure, um, like I said, the order of notice, that is one of the documents that you don't need to have, um, sign or it's just a name and address driven. So if you were struggling, then that order of notice, you would not even realize it was on record. That's what I thought too. You know, yeah. Some poor person that's losing their house and it's terrible. Right. There's many reasons. I mean, there's um, property that goes to an estate and they're waiting to go through the whole probate court. So sometimes the mortgage may get behind. It Just because there's an order notice doesn't mean that it's going to end up going to a foreclosure. It ju it's just a notice saying that you are behind in your mortgage payments and we have gone and gotten permission from land court to start the process to foreclose. It said foreclosure. Right. Right, it probably is. It does happen, unfortunately, for some people. Mm -hmm. Do you have any questions? It doesn't have to be about the property fraud watch. Let me. Um, I have another one. Sure. I mean, you said monitoring parents, you know, say they're out of state. You know, that's not your office. <laughs> no, but if they are snowbirds, and they have a property in Southern Essex and they also have a property someplace warmer, you know, um, you can monitor that property. Or if someone, like I said, passes away and their name's still on the deed, include their name in the property fraud watch. You know, you, that's really important to do. Mm -hmm. um, we receive alerts um, periodically. Most of the alerts that we receive are alerts that um, people have moved. They've sold their homes. Um, because if you, if you sign up through our website, I don't have access to your information. Our IT is the only person that can access your information. If you don't have um, email, a computer, um, you want our customer service um, email address, we monitor it so then we, at that point, when I'm signing you up, I ask you, how do you want me to contact you? Do you want me to email you? Do you want me to call you? Do you want me to mail you? And so if you want me to call you, if an alert comes in um, first thing Monday morning, we will um, call you and let you know that a document came in. And many times it's because you can look at the deed and see that they sold the property or they put it into a trust. I mean, just by reading the deed, you, it tells the story but we still, we reach out to you, let you know. So when you do sign up, there is the final screen that states that you have 24 hours to activate the property fraud watch alert. So if you could do that, that way it's now active. Um, and if you forget, just give us a call and we can I'll ask our IT to intervene on your behalf um, but if you, you know, if you don't want to sign up yourself, just call us. We can do it right over the phone with you. Now, during this pandemic, many, many homeowners don't realize uh, because every office is different the way they do things now. But the registry of deeds is fully operational right now. We receive documents via um, 
electronic recording. If you were a title company, a law firm, someone who does volume, we you can enroll for electronic recording. But for homeowners, you can still mail documents in. Or we have um, a drop-off station. So we are recording documents for the homeowners just through glass doors. So you can come into our building, you can drop a document off with the payment, you can request to wait for it to be recorded and receive a copy of it back. Um, so we are working with homeowners. So there are people that still need to record permits and var variances and discharges of mortgage and homesteads and you know routinely recorded documents for homeowners. So you can still come in and do that. And you can email us, you can call us, we can provide you whatever assistance that we're capable of doing for you. Mm -hmm. Any questions? It doesn't have to be about the Property Fraud Watch. I have a question. Mm -hmm. If you were to sign up for this Property Fraud Watch now, is there a way that you can go back in and see that you have a clean, say you've owned your house for 25 years or so, is there a way once you sign up for it that you can go back in and see that you have a clean deed on your house and you've always had so since you owned it, let's say? That there's nothing that's happened in the past. Because I know you're going to give information for what would happen in the future should you see something happen. But what about making sure that it's okay right when you sign up for it? Absolutely. Um, you have, through SalemDeeds.com, you can go on at any time. There is a public records law. So all these documents are public record. You can go on and view any of your documents. On our homepage, there's two portals. One, homeowners search. It's kind of like the easy button. It's for, you know, you put your name in. You can only choose one town. And you can choose all your documents. You can choose just a deed, mortgages, whatever you like. The other one is um, search our records, 1,640 to present. Because our documents go back to 1,640. There are people who do historic research through our documents. You can go on and put in your last name, first name, set a date range, and the documents will pop up. You can also call the, our customer service staff. As I mentioned earlier, we're not title examiners. We can't perform a title search. We're, we're, we're clerks. We're knowledgeable, but we can't go beyond the level of knowledge um, that the registry offers. So we could tell you this is the most current deed. We could tell you whether your mortgages had proper discharges. We could tell you if you had a homestead. Um, we could tell you if there were any liens on your property and if those liens had the counterpart, counterbalance, like if it was a mass tax lien that it had a um, release or redemption with it. We could tell you things like that, which is what your what you would be looking for. Um, here's another question in the, from the chat. Uh, once a mortgage is paid off, can people still fraudulently put their name on the house documents? Yes. A deed is ownership of your property. It is recorded the day you purchase that property, the day that property is conveyed to you, not purchased, conveyed to you, because you can be conveyed property via a, a, a transaction, a conveyance. You can be conveyed from probate, a will. So there's many different ways you can receive property. Mortgages are financial liens that go against a property. So the lifetime of owning a property you have your ownership and then you have a mortgage and then you pay it off and then maybe you find a better rate and you refinance. So you always have the opportunity to ask someone to lend you money with the house being your collateral, whether it is a lender, a bank, or whether it's family. So the only way your home ownership is changed is if you create a new deed whether you decide at some point in time um, you want to um, put your property in a trust or you decide that you want 
one of your adult children's names on the deed. Whatever the reason is, that's when the ownership is altered, regardless of whether, you know, I mean, the mortgage is the financial end. You shouldn't alter ownership when you have a mortgage. Um, but I mean, that's a, a question you ask an attorney. But yes, yeah, someone can. Someone can alter a deed whether you have a mortgage or not. Um, you know, it is, it is sad and scary of what the different scams that are out there. And that's why programs like Register O'Brien's is, um, you know, um, important. There is a company out there right now. It is a le legitimate company that is offering 24-hour monitoring for $14.99 a month. And it accomplishes pretty much the same thing that we're doing for free. So Register O'Brien did do a press release um, not long ago. And that information was brought to him by a homeowner who emailed us. So the minute he read that email, you know, the next, you know, that same day he was saying, okay, th this is what we're doing. We're going to let more people know about this property fraud watch. And that's why it's great for like the Beverly Public Library to include us because we pr were providing a service. You know, and when I, it's just, it's just good customer service. That's what it is. It's not, we're not gaining anything from it. But did, I hope that answered your question. I wonder if you could explain the um, homeowner ownership that you mentioned um, earlier. Okay. So a deed is recorded with um, the registry of deeds. It is the ownership of the property. It's a document, it's like a title to the property. I'm sorry, I, you know, I meant homestead. homestead. Oh, the home, oh, the homestead, yes. The homestead is a supplemental protection. It doesn't take the place of any other um, insurance that you would have. It protects you from unsecured creditors, frivolous lawsuits. So if you, you know, look at secure creditor, secure creditors would be your mortgage, equity line, state, federal taxes. If you were court ordered to pay child support or alimony, uh, those things you can't skirt around. Life falls into another category, more like unsecured creditors. Unsecured creditors would be credit cards. If um, someone slipped and fell on your property and they sued you, um, your dog bit somebody. So a homestead protects you in your home. It doesn't prevent you from being leaned. You still have to pay your credit cards because a credit card company will, you know, go to the sheriff's department, have an execution on money judgment put in with the courts. So there will be a lien against your property, but they can't force you to sell your home to pay down that debt. So it protects you in your home. And in 2011, that was the last amendment to the Homestead Act. And that provided a statutory or automatic 125,000 in equity protection of your home. So for someone who's purchasing a house today, they probably don't have a lot of equity in the home, but they have an automatic homestead. They can declare a homestead it's by filling out a form and then recording that with the registry of deeds. It's $35 to do that. And um, for the most part, you don't have to ever do it again. If you keep your property as is ownership, if you decide to put it into a trust, there is a different homestead form for homes owned by trustees. Um, if you can have one homestead on a property and it's what you consider your primary residence. So if you're a snow and you reside in Florida, there are some tax benefits in Florida. So many people will release the homestead in Massachusetts and declare themselves 51% um, residents in Florida so they can receive the benefits of the homestead. In Massachusetts, there are no tax benefits from it. But it's for thirty-five dollars. It's great to have. I do know um, that you see the homestead protecting people when they do file bankruptcy. 
many bankruptcy attorneys will have um, their clients come down and fill out a new homestead. So that way it's, they, it's on record. Uh, we do a lot of homesteads. Um, that's a very popular type of document. When um, there is a real estate transaction, the attorneys uh, need to at least discuss the homestead with the, um, the new homeowners, whether they choose to file or not. But it's good to have. And um, right now the coverage is um, up to 500,000 in equity protection. And that's based upon um, the age of 62. So if you are married and you're both under 62, you share a homestead. If you are married and you're both 62 years of age or older, you can have your own individual um, protection. You can be on the same form, the way the form allows you to fill it out, so the same $35, but you can have an aggregate of a million dollars, up to 500 for one spouse and up to 500 for the other spouse. If you are um, married and one spouse is under 62 and the other spouse is 62 or over, we suggest you do two separate homesteads because when the law was amended, if you're sharing with someone who's 62 years of age or older, it's termed an elderly homestead. And if they pass away, that homestead terminates. But your spouse would still have the statutory homestead as well. We do a whole presentation on just the Homestead Act. Uh, we've been doing that for, oh my goodness, five, six, seven years. It's a very popular program. We'll have to have you come. We'll have to have that one. Yes, that's a great Next. one. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So does anyone have any other questions? I can tell you some other um, opportunities. I mean, benefits we have at the Registry of Deeds. Um, you know, there are... Oh, we do have one. Can a single person have a homestead? Yes. Yes, absolutely. You can even have a homestead if you convey your property to your adult children and you reserve a life estate in the property. You can have a, you can have a um, homestead as well. Um, one other thing that we would always bring up at the, our live um, presentations is that there, um, there are companies out there, if you were to make a change in your deed or purchase a property, there's a company that will offer you, um, and it looks extremely official, it is a recorded deed notice where when I first started, it was like $49. It's now like $86. They will send you a copy of a deed and some type of a uh, property home assessment profile. You can get a copy of your deed for free. Register O'Brien provides copies of your deed or any of your documents at no cost. He feels they're your documents. You deserve to have legal copies of them. So if you were to get one of these notices and these notices, all these scams look so official. This is, we believe, a scam because you won't get a copy of your deed. People bring these notices in and say, six months ago, I sent you $86 and I haven't gotten my deed yet. And we explain that that's not from us. So as I said in the very beginning of the presentation, if you receive junk mail, you receive mail with someone else's name on it, and it happens more than once. Um, you get, if you get notices, um, even if it's an email from the you know, IRS, or they're updating your banking information, um, question it. There's a lot of phishing going out there. Um, it happens with our office as well. Um, so question everything. Don't just click on it and go. Um, because you're, you may be giving you know, information that you don't want to fall into someone else's hands. I have a, a chat question. Um, if I have a homestead and then refinance my house, do I need a new homestead document? You do not. Because when the law was amended in 2011, that was one of the other amendments. Prior to 2011, every time you refinanced, you wiped away your homestead but now you do not have to refile a Declaration of Homestead Act when you refinance. 
this remains intact. So along those lines, if, if we've had an old homestead like from 35 years ago and mortgage been paid off and all that, it's still good no matter what? It is still good. Prior to 2011, only one person's name went on the Homestead Act. Okay. So if you are now over, uh, you're, you are now 62 years of age and older and you're, and you've, and you haven't altered your deed and it's in one person's name, then yes, it is still active. If you are married and let's say it's in your name, but you have a spouse whose name's not on it, they're still sharing your protection. If you want to increase your protection, then you can, um, you know, file a new homestead as well. Because you would have up to six, up to five hundred thousand if you were sixty-two years of age or older, and your spouse would also have the opportunity to have their own up to five hundred thousand. But most of the time, if you ever needed a homestead protection, you should be talking to an attorney. There'd be some legal situation you were involved in, and at that time, the the attorney would be advising you. I mean, we're not as I mentioned, a legal office, we don't take the place of any attorneys. So follow what their advice would be. Okay. Mm -hmm. Any other questions? I think this is good to wrap it up. I want to thank you. That was very interesting. And thank everyone for the questions. Everyone has yeah, they some were really great questions. Great questions. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah. And, um, and thank you for tuning in. Yeah. Yeah. And we'll definitely have to have a homestead one. Um, that was very informative. Thank you. Thank you. It is thank great. You. All right. Thank, thank you. So you, thank you. you have a great day. Yeah. All right. Thank you. All right. Thank, thank you.